There's a delusion amongst those people, the, which is 74 million people, right? But it's a lot of people who uh, are falling for the delusion of Trump could still win this, even though today, as we're not going to cover this really, but the Electoral College confirmed that the 270 votes go to Biden. So that's all that really matters in a traditional <laughs> sense of the word. But we want to make sure that you see that the delusion that has occurred during the last couple of weeks. Uh, so we're going to talk about the Trump coup that we wish was over, but is not quite over. CME's <laughs> group is uh, trading uh, water in on the stock market now in California. Um, Facebook being sued over allegations, uh, over acquisitions that they had, and also allegations about the disinformation that Facebook and Twitter have. Um, just the changes in our media services over the future global environment, which could also, I just wanted to make it a global uh, discussion because of how much it affects other regions, like rural areas of China is what we're going to end up talking about. And then finally, which I believe is a more interesting change of uh, path, for Disney and all these other units, Disney's announcing a landmark deal with a collaboration um, called Kugali, who's an uh, African continent uh, group of uh, animators. So that's my my happier story about how things change because some pressure from the outside can help. Yeah, sounds. Let's good. start though with the let's start with the the pressure from within though, which is uh, watching this video of the Trump our. Trump supporters being delusional in Georgia, which is for them a very important state to win, because I think they can still Republicans can still win Georgia if they wanted to. But let's throw it up to this first video and see the uh, mess that we have right now. Are you going to vote? I, I don't know yet. If it's going to be the same counters and the same Dominion machines, I may not. And if I don't see the Republicans thumping for Trump, I'm not voting for them. Two critical runoff elections in Georgia next month will decide what party controls the U.S. Senate. But some Trump supporters here still falsely believe Trump didn't lose this state in the presidential election, and they don't think Georgian Republican Senate candidates are standing up for Trump. Some folks are saying they're not going to show up. I understand them because we're pissed. Did you vote, sir, in the, in the presidential Trump. election here in Georgia? I did. <laughs> Who did you vote for, if you don't mind me asking? Greatest president we've ever had, Donald right. J. Trump. And he lost? <laughs> he didn't lose. He's going to win. Are you kidding me? He ain't going to lose. Do you plan on um, voting in the don't Senate care. runoffs next month? I do plan on voting in the Senate runoff. For a Republican, I take it? I don't know at this point. So you might not vote Republican in January? I don't vote for a party, OK? Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, the Democrats and Republicans can all go to hell. Because if you don't stop this fraud of an election, you don't have our back, so why are we having yours? If I were chair of the Republican Party and I hear you, a Georgia voter, a, a, a conservative, a Trump supporter, a Republican, saying they might not vote, I would be freaking out. I would say, we're, oh my God, are we going to lose this to well, the that's Democrats? That's the point. That's the point. Those two Republican senators need to get their asses out of their office and start thumping on the streets and demanding a real recount, not a fake recount. Do you trust that um, next month's election, the runoffs are going to be fair? Not 100 percent, but I'm still encouraging people to vote because if they don't vote, there will absolutely be nothing to sort out and we will have gifted the election to the Democrats. Yeah. That's the only thing that made sense. There's so much to unpack. Yo, There's so much for Trump. Back. Let's Yo, stop for Trump. No, the only thing that <laughs> made sense was what she says. Well, if they don't do anything, they're going to give it up. That's the only thing. Everything else was just like, oh my God. <laughs> like these people are, I don't know, cult members, man. And I don't know. It's crazy. And it, they don't want to. You know what? I think the best piece of advice is don't vote. Mm. Don't yeah. vote. Yeah. Don't vote for them. <laughs> it's funny. They, they were saying, um, Oh, we're not Republican, but those Republicans got like they seem Republican. You know, like they want the Republican uh, things to Dixie you know, hat. To, That's all I gotta say. Love Kinda that guy. What are you Southern talking about? Right on that hat. Yep. I don't vote for <laughs> Republicans, or Democrats. Yep, 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 yep. I don't vote. I don't vote, don't even vote. though I vote. That's great. Stay home. <laughs> We want you to stay home. Yeah, that's it's pretty crazy, man. I'd rather that than than them coming out and uh, trying to put these Republicans in there. Let's get this. Uh, let's get it swung for like what the first time in 
how many years? I think it's been like 40, 50 years or something like that that they said it's supposed to be. If it it's does go Democrat. Years, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Stay home. Um, I mean, and what I find fundamentally obs- obscene is that there was, it's important that they have a, a black person in there, but it's obscene that like there's, there are black Trumpers out there in Georgia and yeah. they're willing to go out there for for the cause basically and you're i don't understand what they believe anymore because it's no way that you can you can't change the electoral college and i feel like they want it two ways they and that's why the next one is our a representative i want to show the government even wants it both ways we've had lost popular uh votes before we just had it with hillary clinton she won the popular vote so the idea that now it hurts their feelings and they're re- <laughs> like they're literally yelling at representatives to be like you got to go against all logic right now <laughs> go right against now, the whole country is what we want the whole country well, uh, they don't care are we supposed to be the snowflakes though what does that make them bubbles yeah it's <laughs> funny that it's like they they get pissed when we protest but they want to go out there and yell and scream and go crazy over this with no justification, like honestly, there's no way they're gonna, you know, they would have won. We we got the courts against it, we got everybody against it. Yet, you know, at the end of the day, it's like they still feel like there's some way they're gonna win magically, and it's it's pretty crazy, man. These people are bonkers. I think the most bonkers <laughs> and, one is the president himself still trying to yeah. every lawsuit he can out there. They that's they for said money, something man. about the collective eye roll of uh the supreme court like uh no this isn't gonna work either yeah. sorry he's just trying to make some money that's all it is at the end of the day he's he's bank you know like you know uh, withdrawing from the bank you know because he's leaving next month or whatever it is so he's got to make sure he, he he pulls out all his money with, with as many little fees as possible he wants to get everything everything he can that guy's funny man I, they're all funny before <laughs> we go to before we go to the to that representative from from Alabama who wants to continue this still for some reason, <laughs> um, I want to double down on what Teresa just said about the one Republican who is is not a Republican per se. He is literally mm. voting towards the cult of Trump, and he's literally saying that other people have to other representatives should be Trump supporters or else. And that makes me understand what has been going on for the last couple of years. They, I mean, I think I already knew this, but it's important to see it like, oh, yeah, you don't support the Republican Party. You just love when there's a strong man in office and then it is aligned with your thoughts. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah they love this guy. So you want to send it up to. Oh, yeah, please. Sorry, I, I cut you off, Teresa. No, no, no. They love this guy. They love. They don't care that he's Republican. They don't care what he stands for. They just love that uh, the ignorance that he spouts out from himself is just, it's it's his. Their kind of uh, their kind of talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just nuts, man. Uh, so I... they're, they're they're drinking the Kool Aid, man. <laughs> There's nothing else to say. Like I don't, you know, first they were like, oh, you know, we're gonna prove them that we're right. We got all the evidence, and now like all the courts have said. No, we you're not supplying us with the right information. It's not going to go anywhere. They're still delusional, man. It's it's, it's crazy, man, and, and that's scary because crazy people are the most dangerous people in the world. You know, that's I'm afraid. You know, a little bit. You know, but hopefully, you know, they're all talk. You know, we'll see what happens. Um, was I going to say which? Um, okay, gotcha. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Next video. Alabama, Alabama Republican Congressman Mo Brooks joins us now. He's made headlines in recent days with his plan to challenge the 2020 election results on the floor of the Congress. Congressman, explain first how you plan to do that. Well, under the United States Constitution, Article 1 and Article 2, along with the 12th Amendment, the United States Congress is the ultimate judge and jury, the final arbiter of all election contests involving federal officials, whether it be congressmen, senators, or president of the United States. And so there's a process in place by which we do that, and that process is initiated on January the 6th, beginning at 1 p.m., when we have a roll call of the states uh, to a combined session of Congress presided over by the vice president of the United States, Mike Pence. And at the appropriate time, when a state's name is listed and they uh, submit their purported election results or electoral college vote, Uh, Then if a House member and a senator concur and we object 
to that particular submission of Electoral College votes. Uh, that triggers a two-hour floor debate in the House and the Senate, and then a vote on the House and, the, and in the Senate on whether to accept or reject those election returns. Which states do you specifically plan to challenge? Well, I'm not limiting myself, but by way of example, Pennsylvania, Georgia, Nevada, Wisconsin, maybe Arizona. And why are you challenging in those states? Because their election systems are so badly flawed as to render their reported results untrustworthy. So also a lot to unpack there because that was only two days ago. So at the moment, this guy really believes that he can change the outset by bringing this to Congress when the Electoral College confirms the votes. So the electoral that's what happens first. It happens in stages. So the Electoral College just did it today where they confirmed the amount of the um, of 270. It's actually above that. It's 272, I believe, um, that they confirmed. But then you go to Congress and you have to just, it's literally just a move to do a judicial, uh, to do a legislative pause. Basically, you're just pausing Congress for, for two to three hours because there's no way anything is going to change through that. So I, it's performative. And this performance that they keep doing is enraging. And I mean, like bringing up the, the worst attributes of the Trump supporters. Um, and I don't know what to do because the rallies that happened this weekend in Washington show that right now. Like they believe the Kool-Aid so deeply that they are willing to go to go to Washington with weaponry and look like, I know they call themselves the Proud Boys, but they, they're the weakest boys I've ever seen. <laughs> That's all I got to say. Um, they did a lot of damage, though. Yeah. Sorry, I had a, I, I muted myself and didn't realize it. Um, what was I going to say? Gotcha. It, the funny thing is, is the way they act is ridiculous. If you see them and the things that they say and do in public, to like kind of like, oh, you know, we're big and bad and blah, blah, blah. You look at them like, man, these guys are clowns, man. Like, like the whole demeanor and like the things that I saw a picture of somebody like, like running uh, FMT, FNTFO or whatever it is on their butts. I don't know if you saw that, mm -hmm. that picture. Yo, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, why would you do that? Like, that doesn't make you look tough, man. That makes you look crazy, man. Looks like, like a bunch of childish behavior. I had to behavior. check myself. Yeah, man. For I had real. to check myself. I was thinking about, about putting that up because it's so ridiculous, but it's making its rounds. So everybody yeah, knows that yeah. they're. Yeah, that's crazy, man. I, did you see it, Teresa? No, I didn't see Yo, it. No, they, they they were basically mooning, but on the on their butts they had the FN, you know, it's crazy. People are stupid. I don't know. I mean, the whole theatrics of everything, I think that they're all putting on this show because of these crazy Trumpers. They don't want to lose them. They don't want to lose their support. Uh, so they're like, okay, we're going to pull out all the stops. I mean, you heard them yourselves. You're not out in those streets thumping for Trump. We're going to get rid of you. We're not going to vote for you. So they're going to hold on. Yeah, there's a lot they're of They're going to hold on to their people, their base. This is their base now. They've inherited it even past Trump time. They're going to inherit this. These are their people. I mean, and that's actually the hardest thing about this Biden administration and Congress that's coming in, is that we don't know. We know that we elected one person who is is into the Proud Boys and all of that, but will they realize that they have now a, they have a base of crazy people yep <laughs> and they have to either placate to them or they have to try to change their mind on a lot of issues like there's just certain things that we just need to get done as a country mm -hmm. and being at a complete pause all the time like saying that we're just like i'm surprised that the omnibus bill i i hate war but it's a bill that gets passed every year I'm surprised that they that Trump might veto it, and when there'll be no relief in any way because they tagged on a lot of stuff. They always tag on a lot of stuff to the omnibus bills. So, yeah, I mean, it's for war. It's for to give them pay raises. It's very important to note that. But it also means that there's going to be some kind of structure afterwards to help uh, help regular people or small businesses. Yeah. It's something I, I hate. I hate to say that I don't enjoy watching Democrats not do anything for us as a whole. Like they could have put in a much more powerful deal, but well, they can't hold out. <laughs> you're not used to it I'm, by now. There they you said, go. <laughs> they said that um, a lot of that um, could have been used for saber rattling. You know, like 
for him to like, oh, I'm not going to mm-hmm. do this. I'm going to veto this so he can get his way. But at the end of the day, they feel like he's probably going to, you know, back down and not, you know, you know, he'll have them, you know, the, the bill pass or whatever. It's crazy. This dude is crazy. No, nothing's going to change either yeah. when, you know, Joe gets in there the by, by Biden ship that he's going to end up putting in because, yeah. you know, he's going to yeah. want to try to unite the side. No, you can't unite with crazy. Sorry. We already yeah. see you. We see yeah. you for your crazy. Yes. We see you for your racism. Yeah. It's done. It's over. And he's going to squander away the first four years. And then we'll see about what happens in the following four years after that because who knows might get a trump round too you know yeah. people love to forget they love to forget all right. All right, let's cut to the next video and see what's up yeah And this is why I don't go to demonstrations too often. So, can we pause the video actually right there? Um, oh, so good. Uh, I can't. Oh, man. Let me see. No, it's okay. Then we'll talk about it right afterwards. But I. I mean, I can't. I just got. I don't have it set up. Yeah, it's go. all good. Sorry about that. Go ahead. Honestly, what it no, 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 it's all good because that really just shows you how intense this kind of conversation is going on. Like that, that the small group of Proud Boys. It's a very small group of Proud Boys, but they apparently are violent and ready to go. And then there's all these other demonstrators who have gotten to the point where their tactics have to be to guard themselves at all times. So if you notice how much of the the anti-Trump demonstrators are basically, I mean, they might be even Black Lives Matter. Um, it doesn't really say here, you know what I'm saying? It's like it kind of gets lumped together in this kind of society right now. But they have to guard themselves with like shields in the front yeah. line. You know, yeah. they're just waiting for the cops at this point. And the cops are there protecting the Proud Boys. They're literally flanked, flanked around them, protecting yeah. these people. And it's interesting, who do we who do we give the power to? We're like it's clear that the government or at least these local governments in dc right here like the police are saying that it's more important to just protect these people no matter what no matter what they say and what they do and i that's a great thing that's a that's an important job for a cop right to have the ability to not uh go after the people saying probably very negative things about you um, most of those Trump supporters aren't really fans of the police either. It's just they're fans of the police when the police protect them. Yeah. Yeah. So I bear with me. I'm yeah, but what kills something. what kills me is that they're. It just says so much when it looks like the police are just protecting them and that's it. And uh, you know, okay, those are your people. So those are your boys. <laughs> that's what it looks like. You don't want people to feel like that, but then at the same time, you're protecting these guys. And it's like, it's, I don't know if it's, you're protecting them from themselves. Is that what it is? Because they, they have weapons, they have stuff to protect themselves with. So it's, it makes me think like, okay, they're there to make sure that they don't step out of line and then make them all look bad. Yeah. I mean, Yes, we we know that some of these outfits of police officers uh, fall further in line with like the Proud Boys thinking. So, I I agree with you. Yeah, sorry about that. Like, 
I think a cable was loose down there, and I had to fix it. But um, uh, yeah. Gotcha. Do you want me to you want me to hit play? Let it go on a little more. No, you can actually uh, move to the next video if you want. It, it's really just the same thing. It's really just for me. Uh, to, yeah, you can move to the next one. Video because right. I, I just want to describe what happened. Okay, so VC8, right? Here we go. Yes. So the reason that I'm even showing this right now is because you can see how large the demonstration is. And you can tell that they're trying to separate all of the people who are anti-Trump demonstrators out of it, anti-Magna Trump. And then, unfortunately, four people were stabbed. So this so is the aftermath of that. Did you see, uh, yeah. d did you see the video of um, the guy they surrounded? And um, I think in the, it, there was a guy who was, um, who, yeah, they, they, if you look at uh, Status Quo, because I, I, I follow a bunch of different people, I saw a video that they had filmed that they had this one guy, I guess he might have been, I don't want to say he was Antifa or Black Lives Matter, because I don't know who, what he was, um, but um, a bunch of Proud Boys and some people were surrounding him, and they started, um, you know, tormenting him and hitting him and stuff like that. And he happened to have a knife, and I think he actually stabbed one of the Proud Boys, um, you know, in that instance, because he was getting jumped. You know what I mean, basically. There was also a couple of other videos that I saw where, um, let me uh, cut back. I guess, uh, let, let, let's, you want to finish this video, or do you want to cut back? Um, no, it's to, okay. To us? Let's just right, talk. So let's, yeah, yeah let's, let's, let's get back on. So uh, there was a video of a guy and his girlfriend, and they were walking. I don't know what provoked whatever, but they started beating up the guy in front of the girlfriend. And she was just like, please leave us alone, leave us alone, or whatever it is. And, um, you know, they just wouldn't stop. And then eventually somebody had came and, like, kind of escorted him out of there. But they, they really lumped him up, you know what I mean? And um, the guy didn't look like he was any threat to anybody. You know, they were telling him, oh, get out of here, don't you ever come back, get out of here, you know, like that type of thing. So maybe he was affiliated with one of the anti-Trump uh, protesters. But, uh, you know, either way, it was just him and his girlfriend. It, it makes no sense that it... There were there were a bunch of them just lumping them up, like maybe like eight or nine of them, like in the area. Yeah. So, I mean, know. this is the problem with lumping people into quote unquote Antifa, whatever they want to call it. I mean, the idea of it being already anti-fascist is that it's not a group that is settled together to create chaos. It's actually made to go against the fascist extremes that are coming up right now. They've so been... it's very difficult for me to even deal with it on a logical level because they believe that Antifa is some kind of organized group. And if they don't believe that, they actually just love to create as much chaos as possible. Yeah, they think they're so... like anarchists or something. Like they're like, oh, they're here to destroy the country and da 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 da. I'm like, Hitler was a fascist. We hated Hitler. Remember that? I mean, like it wasn't that long ago and we, that we were all used to say, oh, you know, we didn't, we disliked Hitler. Now all of a sudden, we're trying to say that our president is doing similar actions and you're supporting it. I'm like, that makes absolutely no sense. And then like, I, I get into a lot of discussions on Facebook and a bunch of other th places where people trying to explain to them that it's just a term that means anti-fascist. It's, it's not a group. Oh no, they're a group. They go and they write and they start problems. They're like anarchists and they, they trying to make things, you know, turn into communist China. And like, you know, I get all this crazy stuff and I'm like, yo, well, I think it always it comes then it always comes back to what we always talk about, which is the lack of education yep. in this country. They stop teaching history. They stop teaching a lot of things to make us dumber, so that nobody can see these um, parallels that are being formed. We can't see that, and it's leaving us in a space where Trumpers and all these radical people, real radical people, are coming into play and history will repeat itself. It's, we say it all the time and it's going to happen again. You know, I think there's like the, there's not even that many people that were part of the Holocaust that are still alive to this day. So, you know, you've got kids that don't believe that it's anything but like a movie. You know, the same thing with like Titanic. Titanic didn't really happen. <laughs> <laughs> Holocaust didn't happen. 
So it's gonna be slavery never happens. What are you talking about? Well, that I've actually heard that one before. That it is, it, it was in indentured servitude, and not that slavery itself didn't exist, but that the principles of slavery weren't as bad as slavery is. You guys are treated great. <laughs> I've heard that argument before. Yeah, it's a scary great. argument because it. Yeah. Education. <laughs> um, just Education. so, just I just want to make sure that we get this in because this is important information. The four victims are reportedly in critical condition right now. A total of eight people were transported to local hospitals, including two police officers. The officers' injuries uh, are said to be non-life-threatening. Two other people were treated for with, with minor injuries. So that's 23 people were arrested. Let's see. Yes. So 23 people were arrested, uh, according to AP, as fights broke out. Um, and yeah, there was a litany of stuff happening on Twitter about this and like literally just small videos of what's going on. But I mean, that's what we have right here. Four people stabbed right there, 23 arrested in a clash. And I I actually have not been going to the rallies. I mean, New York City is a bigger issue if you want to talk about rallies in New York and how that's not really effective. But um, these real protests in Washington are important, but I'm... I'm afraid because I feel like these are going to continue to happen during a Biden administration. There are enough people who are upset with the status quo that they're willing to go all the way to Washington and and have a fight with somebody. They said that um, the, the Trump, um, all these people liking Trump and everything else and and they, they stop to steal people or whatever it is. They're actually going to uh, really disrupt the Republican Party itself. They're saying that, um, you know, like there's certain beliefs that are differing, you know, like you see what's happening with Fox News and other news organizations. It's like similar to that happening is the actual Republican Party. Some people believe it should go a certain way, while others are, are believing that it should go in another direction, more, you know, like peaceful and like whatever. And like, you know, kind of like more um, bipartisan type of mentality. It's more centered. It's more yeah. a neoliberal liberal feeling about yeah. how we should be a slow progressive state. Yeah, yeah. And there's actually I, there was a Republican. Uh, I forget the congressman's name. I I hate the fact that I don't remember a lot of these things. But I I, I saw I read or saw something about how he was you know kind of disappointed at the fact that um they're going in this direction and they're they you know Trump should have accepted you know okay I lost and whatever else and that he's literally destroying the the party with all this chaos that he's creating. Destroy and, it. Yeah. Destroy yeah. it. I hope they destroy it too, because because like I've never really I'm, I I don't have against anything against Republicans in general, like you know the, there's decent ones out there that you know they believe you know certain things and you know no. pro life and so on and so forth. You made your bed but, with a fucking racist. Yeah, you made yeah. your bed with a fucking racist. Pretty much. And guess what? It's but that's not, not all of them. Not all of them. It's most of them. Most yeah. of them. They've gone through party. There's. There hasn't been a time where they've gone through party favored, favoritism, yeah. you know, and they put aside what's best for the country. That's what kills me. They have put aside what is best for the country to be behind this man who is a blatant racist and wants to see this this whole thing burn. Like, come on. What is wrong with you? I have no time for none of you. No more. That's yeah. it. I hope he takes you all down. You can say a lot of that about Democrats too, though. Democrats Absolutely. have, have Absolutely. made a thing. That Please. thing we were talking about earlier. Like I actually did a little more research on that AOC uh, thing that we, you had brought up about Jimmy Dore and AOC and all these other people. And I, I started mm -hmm. thinking about it, and um, they were talking about how. I mean, I don't want to get too much off a topic, but you know, we, we need to fight to get the things that we want to get. You know, AOC and, and, and the squad—they're the best thing that we have at the moment. But at the same time, they've been complacent with some of the the, the things that are actually, um, and, and I and I, I was kind of you know for them, but then I started listening to like what uh, Kyle Kalinsky was talking about today, and saying like if we don't call people out, we don't know who's actually hindering the party, like who's who's um, stopping us from actually making progress. Um, you know, they they say it's okay that people want to say that we support it. But if, unless they put a vote on it and actually see um, who's for it and who is against it, because you know, like if you put a vote on it, that means they got to tie their name to something on paper, so that you know. And a lot of people could talk the talk, but once the, it's time to you know vote for, on something, that 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 really s signifies that 
you know, they're really for something. You know, if, if they don't put their name on it, then that says, okay, these are the type of people that we have to question in the future and maybe primary and in, in future elections because these people aren't going to um, necessarily vote in our in the direction that we want them to. And, you know, you know, AOC had said, you know, we kind of got to play nice. And in some ways we do. <clears throat> but um, there's nothing uh, wrong with holding some of these people accountable in um, certain situations, you know, and that's the thing I got from the whole discussion that they were talking about. And and a lot of our parties, both parties do that. They both, they have their beliefs and then they have, you know, they don't hold any of their politicians accountable. Even the Republicans, it's the same thing. They believe that um, things should go in a certain direction and they just go with the flow. They're like, all right, party over everything. It's not even, you know, like we really deserve more money. You'll hear a lot of Republicans say, <clears throat> Sorry that we should have health care or whatever, or certain things during this time. These businesses should stay open and blah, 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 blah. And then they start talking like socialists. You know what I mean? Like at the end of the day, it's like these are Republicans asking for things that communism and socialism usually provides to their people. And it kind of contradicts what they want to believe in. But you understand what I'm saying? Like, I'm sure you, you get. Yeah, I, 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 I'm actually just going to hear to, to combat. So I, I understand uh, there's a couple people who have the same standpoint about Kyle Kalinske, Jake Uger, uh, a couple yeah. people have said that they don't have to, you don't have to hundred percent agree with Jimmy. The thing yeah. is that I think that on principle, the well, idea I agreed of with him. I actually, I thought I didn't agree with him. I, I, I didn't agree with him. I'm sorry to interrupt. But I think but, we might, we get to a point where we, we actually have a disagreement here, but um, okay, it's go ahead. because Explain. I I think it's a little performative right now. There's literally eight people in the the house that are known progressives. So yes, getting it people on paper works, but you can shuttle Medicare for all late. It, like it will not happen if it doesn't pass in the house. So yeah. basically by doing a performative action now, you might cause damage, irreparable damage to it actually coming to a vote later. Yeah. So I, that's the and the, the real contention, though, I think ended up being more personal, like people were making very personal attacks that weren't founded. So like, I agree, I think you should put pressure on them. I, I don't, I think that at some point, you do have to have Medicare for all as a real vote. Yeah. I don't agree with the timeline. <clears throat> I feel like you did have a, a lopsided Congress. And it's not like AOC is AOC was a freshman. Uh, representative so it was almost like you're going on attack to the one person who is just now the center of progressivism like and it's not on her it's just the fact that she won a hard election i mean she won it That's really right. easily That's but true. she won a hard election so it's almost putting too much pressure on this one person to no, be right. the fundamental progressive for everyone but honestly i i don't disagree with like challenging them and I believe that they should bring it up to a vote at some point. Um, I just don't know if now is the perfect time. It's a lot of strategy, right? Yeah, yeah but that, you know, but then you'll have those same people, not same people like in regards to them, but just in general people say, if not now, when? You know what I mean? Like 10, 20 years from now, like, you know what I mean? So it's like, I get why people sure. are annoyed about it. And I understand why Jimmy, you know, said what he said in that sense. I really don't agree with a lot mm -hmm. of the crazy stuff he's been saying lately. But when I started listening to it and like applying it, I'm like, you know, at the end of the day, it's like at some point we got to put our foot down. It's the same thing like with the stimulus and everything else. You know, people could talk, 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 and then things keep going and going. And next thing you know, it's months, years down the line, nothing's happened. You know, so it's like, when do you actually say, okay, f screw this. I'm going to, you know, actually make a change at this moment. You know, it's like, it's, it's kind of like a really um, hard time, and not hard time, a hard decision to make. Because you don't want to like, you know, mm -hmm. Put your foot in your mouth you know like start something and then find yourself like wait i should have would have done something differently and, and it may have resulted yeah. in something better down the line than if i did something aggressive now and basically shut everybody out in the future you know what i mean like look what they did with bernie yeah. and everything else they basically um you know like oh he's a communist and this and that and whatever so you know god knows like if aoc were to actually be extra aggressive um you know eventually maybe they'll get shut out you know what i mean and it's kind of scary to think that you know you can't speak your your voice you know your feelings in this country and say look we really need health care we really need decent wages we need really need um 
you know, the environment to be clean and, and healthy for our children's future and better education. Like, the, for some reason, people think it's unreasonable in this country. They say, well, if you, you want this, you have to have money and you have to be in the right place in the right environment and you have to do the right things in your life. That's not really fair to put on people in general when, they, when you know, society is as screwed up as it is. Like, look at how it is now. We, we got all these deaths from COVID and everything else. And yet, you know, we're not getting any support from anybody. It's all talk every month. Oh, well, now they're going on vacation again. Wait a minute. They, how, how long does it take to discuss a bill, man? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I've seen these guys go on vacation like four, five, six times already, and nothing's, nothing's happened. You know, it's ridiculous, you know? But what do we do, right? I mean, the fact is that, you know, they they punted on this bill, basically. It's just a way to do a stopgap. It's, it's a Band-Aid, it's a huge Band-Aid, and it's not actually going to directly do anything for most citizens, unfortunately. Um, yep. It's unfortunate, I, but it is what it is. Yep. In some ways, like, you have to understand that, like, we're not in power, and we have to force people who are empowered to do something. So that's where Jimmy Dore's position is correct. Like, you do need to force people to do so. It was just a weird choice of people to go after. I think that's what it ends up being. Like, you can't, you're telling a, a woman of color, here, you won this election and you, you, you've switched the whole dynamic of progressivism, but you're still not progressive enough, which is unfortunately what yeah, the problem is yeah. with some of our leftist side is that they're literally eating each other. Like, there's no reason for it. Like, I do understand the personal attacks that happened where where they came from but it's just not a good way to go and yeah. i hope in the future that we find a way to have these kind of this is a normal discussion to have like i i'm actually with kyle i listened to what he had, had to say about it yeah. um i'm not 100 percent agreeing but that's good you know yeah. you don't have to 100 percent agree with everything i think that's what makes progressives different than a lot of other people we actually like, I'm actually agreeing with you. Like, there's certain things that I feel and there's certain things that you feel. And we kind of come to a, a a midpoint where we can actually say, okay, you know what? I can see your point. You can see some of my point. And, you know, and I guess it, that's how we develop something in the future. You know what I mean? But in, in politics with these people, they tend to be, oh, no, you can't do this. That's ridiculous. You're out of your mind. That's too expensive. Or, you know, all the excuses. But nobody's willing to say, okay, then let me hear your point. Let me see where we can kind of like see eye to eye and work from there. But, you know, that's politics, right? <laughs> that's politics and that's capitalism and other things that, you know, corporatism or whatever you want to call it, that interfere with the the flow of actual people thinking about common sense topics, you know, things that everybody should really be focusing on and, and helping each other. You know, this country could be such a better place. We were great when we were all raking in the dough, but now that things are screwed up, we're going to just point fingers, you know, blame, you know, it's ridiculous, man.